15 hajar di sebelah Right, well, we're back on the bank today with the map, map cameras. Uh, today I brought you to Hayfield Lakes on the island pool. This is going to be a bit of a different one today. This is my first official practice for this year's match this final. So we come here to fish a nice little midweeker today. There's, there's not a lot on, I think there's about 16 anglers on. Unfortunately, I say unfortunately, we've drawn an MPEG, which it's going to be great for catching a load of fish, but not quite right for what I want to learn a bit. But anyway, I've still got a job to do. So what I'm going to con concentrate on today is last year I felt that that short line which proved to be the winning line in, in John Winkup's case was really, really important on this lake. And for myself, I didn't, definitely didn't get it quite right. So today I'm here to pretty much concentrate on that short line in match-ish conditions and just see what I can learn from it to take to the final in a few weeks' time. So I've just got a couple more rigs to get ready and then hopefully the match is starting in about 10 minutes. So we'll see how we go. Sounds like solid, isn't it? Match has just started, or about five minutes ago. And like I said, I just want to concentrate on this short line. It's, it's really important to me that I work out what the best thing to do on this is. I felt last time my feeding was wrong first. I also felt that maybe I used the wrong, not type of bait, pellets are definitely the way to go, but in the wrong form. I'm, I'm not sure that hard oil pellets are necessarily the perfect way to go on this line. I think it might be a case of maybe some soft baits whether the soften, um, soften big pellets or even expand the pellets on the hook may have been a much better option to depend on what, what type of fish you're in your peg. So that's what today's all about. I'm going to start pretty much as I did um, with hard pellets and, and go from my starting point and last time I was fishing here because it, it was good for a few fish. But what I am keen on doing is very quickly Working out if there's lots of skimmers to be caught or uh, what size carp are in my peg, just how they want to feed. I'm responding to it by either changing my rigs, changing my feeding or uh, swapping to a softer bait. So it seems to be a very standard start here that everyone started on the short line as they do. And a few fish are getting caught straight away so I think it's going to be a Proper days fishing by the looks of it. Everyone's catching a few. I think, like I said, we're being on the end. There's a chance that it could be absolutely solid later on. There's a good chance I'll catch down the edge, but I'm not too interested in that. That's, that's for me to have a bit of fun later on. But like I said, my me, me plan for the whole match is very, very simple. I've not set a lot up. I've set two rigs up for this short line. Um, one with a 4B16s float, which I'm fishing in. Probably about six and a half foot there. So I've got a 4B16s to fish hard pellets. So I can fish with a bit of a slower fall with a, a 4B16s float. And then as well, I've set up a 4B18s, which is for me soft pellets. It's a lot more of a case of getting me baked down and just get bites uh, hard on the bottom, if you like. Uh, other than that, I've set up one long rig, just in case I want to have a play on that later on. And an edge rig, just in case again. So it's just those two short rigs that I really want to work at today. So I'd like to win the match, but I'd much rather learn a bit today about the right ways of feeding. Billy the Breams feel quite big down here, don't they? They're not little pokey things. 
That's not a Billy the Bream, is it? Like wallowy carp here, aren't they? They bite that way, like up and then back down. You just got to get that first scoop, haven't you? Because I missed it, because I was useless. You end up doing this. But it's probably been a bit quicker. Right. Oh, it's going weird. To be honest, it, it took me by surprise how much the lake's towing. And just a few things I feel already aren't right with me rig. I feel that like me, me floats not, not positive enough. Me, me bristles a little bit too thin for dealing with this for the tow. I should have used a slightly thicker bristle. Just something. Almost a nice little thing to learn if you want for next time I'm here. But the fishing wise, it's going steady. I've had, I'm 20 minutes in, I've been fishing about 15 minutes. And this is my second calf, we've had a couple of skimmers as well. There's plenty of fish getting caught. So everyone started almost as you'd expect, fishing short. And today's there's a few fish to be caught, it's good. It's, I suppose it was always going to be with us having a bit, a bit of extra room today. It was always going to be decent fishing, but. So it's nice to see that that's definitely still the line that is really important to catch fish on. So that's a proper fish as well, him. He's a nice, probably eight pound. I, say, I do think, I think we're going to need a big weight today. It wouldn't surprise me if 200 pound one today. Definitely 150 minimum. I'd, I'd be amazed if it was anything less than that. So you have to, Catching fish like that, it doesn't take a lot of fish to get to that sort of way. A big mistake that I see a lot is anglers trying to catch fish too quick. When they're that big, you can just plod along all day. If I catch four or five of them an hour, you end up with a mega weight. There's no need for rushing. Just make sure I put that rig in. So I've got to put my rig in quite, quite precisely with how it is, because it's a very deep venue, this, I say I'm getting nearly seven foot on this short line and then it goes to what 10 12 foot on that long line so it's quite a good slope so if i put it in past my feet then it's going to sink my float and it's a little bit too heavy so i need to let it swing in but still maintain a tight line to my pellet so by holding onto my rig and keeping it right in line with my far bank marker and the marker on my pole i can keep everything lovely and accurate so I can always maintain a tight line to my hook bait, which is, is really, really important. Well, so still sticking with hard pellets at the moment. I'm feeding quite heavy. I'm feeding a lot heavier than what I'd normally feed. And I'm throwing plenty of bait. I'm, I'm feeding three or four times by hand every cast, just with sort of eight to 10 pellets. And as well, every time I go in, I'm cupping a nice little tidy pile just to give the fish something to home in on. I'm feeding probably 10 to 15 pellets through a cup every cast as well, just to give myself a little accurate area to fish onto. So I'm definitely gonna have to be careful with this rig. If, if the wind gets up any more, my rig's becoming quite unstable because of, it only has a small amount of buoyancy and that bristle, the bristle's almost not thick enough. So if it gets up any more, I'll have to swap to a, to a bit more of a positive float, but so I'm going to struggle along with this for the, for the meantime and see what happens. But so it's looking good. I've got a big pellet on the hook. I'm just feeding. I'm feeding some slightly oiled up Screttins pellets. So it's good here now. You get the option of Screttins or Coppins. So you can mess about with what you feed, whether you want to feed a, a hard pellet that doesn't break down or you want to feed something slightly softer like a, a Screttins pellet to catch some skimmers maybe just to make your pellet a little bit more versatile. But I've gone with thingies to start with. 
gone with the scratchings to start with, just a little bit of oil on to make them sink. So just so I can catch anything to begin with. I'm not fed anywhere else, I'm just feeding this short line. I'm, I may not feed anywhere else all day until that edge, but the options are there just in case. Here go baby calf. Here go pretty baby calf. Feels like something's happening now, don't it? It's a lot more indications and things now. This is me, Asian calf. Yeah. So yeah, tell me, yeah, Asian calf. This. They're like 20 pound. I bet you didn't do something mad like tail walk 20 times or something you look for, wouldn't it? Oh, he's a, he's a, he's a banana cap. Banana cap. Lovely. Right, well, we're still in first hour. We've had 45 minutes. I'm, I'm properly enjoying myself already, to be honest. I've had four carp, four proper carp. Yeah, four proper carp, uh, a couple of little crassios and a couple of skimmers, but it feels like my peg's developing already. Even this short time into the match, I'm starting to get a lot more indications, getting the odd line and things like that. And I'm understanding when to feed and when not to feed already. Which it's, it's a definite that I can't feed too much or I can't feed anything really once my rig's in the water. If it is, I'm getting some false indications off, off smaller fish, off skimmers and crassios. But other than that, no, it's going well. I've probably got, I've probably got 24 pound. So nice and on target, a decent start. And what I am finding as well is that the carp are a proper good stamp. They're a lot bigger than... I remember last year catching, oh, I caught a lot of fish on feed the last time, so they're probably just a bit smaller on the island. But they're a much bigger average stamp all the fish that you seem to catch on this short line, which is, it's standard really for, for catching on any short line. It's, it's, it's very important that I'm making sure that my bait's being presented well. So I keep it nice and still and tight on that slope. I get a nice positive bite and I get a carp on the end. Whereas if I don't, if I let it just move along with the toe, a bit bigger than I thought. Did that come off? It's come off him. Oh, he's had me that one. That's me being useless. Yeah, if I let my rig move along with the toe, then I'm foul looking quite a few fish. Whether that was then or not, I don't know. I don't think it was. I mean, that was me pulling too hard. Let's see, I'm not fishing too heavy yet. I'm fishing. I've got a nice, robust main line. I've got own. 020 mainline, so I'm just fishing a nice delicate 015 up length to begin with. So I can always step that up last hour to, to an 018 if I've really got to pull a bit. But at the moment, say just a nice 15. So they're not massive, they don't they don't really pull if I'm honest. That one went a bit then, but as a rule, they don't they don't really fight too hard here because it being so deep. Everything you walk seems to go downwards. They're very plodders all the car, which means it's nice and easy for getting them in and you can fish a little bit lighter tackle as a result of that. So we're still fishing all the all the same kit. I've not changed any rig. We're on the on the 4B16s float. We just strung out quite positive, strung out number nines in the bottom third of my rig. So almost like a soft pellet sort of rig. There's no need for proper airy fairy falling through the water rigs and this, it's too much of a big venue and it's towing far too much to do that. So a nice positive rig that's going to stay there where I, where I put it. And I'm almost just sort of setting a trap, I put my little pile in and I just want to cling onto me, 
cling onto my bait, onto my float, to try and keep it dead in line with that little trap. Right in line with my little pile of bait, because I think one carp's just coming in and hoovering the lot up. They're definitely feeding. The bites I'm getting are brilliant. When I get a proper bite, it's flying under. The only thing I'm finding, a little, a little trick that's got me a couple of bites already, it's just by lifting it slightly up that slope. Just by letting me pellet waft about, but still keeping it on the spot. Just pulling it back slightly up the toe. And as it settles again, it's flying under quite often. So we must be watching what's happening down there. See, even despite trying to hold it back as much as I can, my rig's still moving through my uh, peg quite quickly. Unfortunately, it's going with the wind, which is a bit, it's not good really. You want it backing up on the wind to be towing properly. I think as I'm set back in a bay here, it's making it behave a little strange. So I'm letting that float go another two inches to the left. And then that's the maximum I'm letting it go down my peg for now, because I'm getting all the bites right on my feed. So it's pointless letting it go too far down my swim. I'll just be wasting time. I'm still not feeding anything at all over the top of my float. I can feed as I'm putting my rig in, that's all right, but feeding on top of my floats just resulting in me striking at false bites and laying my rig in a lot more regular than I need to be doing it. Constantly relay my rig because I'm, I'm striking at false indications. So in water this deep, by doing things like that, it could add on to a lot of time at the end of the match wasted. If it's taking 10 seconds nearly for me rig to settle. It's a lot of time to be wasting relaying me rig. See, there's still no panic with it. I'm, I'm guilty with myself. I'm always in a rush to try and make things happen quickly when I'm doing this, but the size of fish, there's just no need to whatsoever. If I can set the target at between five and 10 fish every hour, you can have a colossal weight. Smaller carp, but a dark one. He's de disgorged himself. 26 pound. I'm good to go. I do actually like leaving my pellet on. If it's not too, my pellet's not too snotty. I do like leaving it on the hook. I do feel that sometimes they pick out, especially when fishing hard on the deck, they pick out them nicely fluffed up swollen pellets. I will leave them pellets on as long as they're not too scabby. I'll leave them on for as long as I possibly can. But we're going to carry on with this. I, so I still don't feel any need to change. Um, hook bait or rig or anything just yet. I, I'm quite happy with where it's going. I think the change of the rig is going to come or change of hook bait is going to come when it gets a little bit more difficult mid match. Pardon me. And then I might need to try and catch some small carp like I've just caught or some skimmers and some crassios just to put a bit of weight in my net when it goes a bit dicky right in the middle. But for now, we're happy. We'll plod along like this. Oh boy, this one, isn't it? This is one of your old ones. From the Bivy days. Oh, he's 10 pounds, love. He's 10 pounds. Right, what are we on? We are on 12.23, we've had an hour and 20 minutes and I've got 
50 pound in, isn't it? I'd say that's a decent start, isn't it? I'll take that. So we've got 48 pound, if we want to be exact. That's what I've got in my head. Right, well, my peg is changing a little bit, definitely. So that first hour or so, there were a few carp feeding. And now it's very noticeable that they're not. I mean, no carp are really getting caught anywhere, really. Maybe the odd one on the feeder to the island, but they're not, they're not them big fish that we're feeding to start. So now I've swapped down to a six mil, because I'm, I'm still getting a lot more. I'm getting a lot more indications, if anything, to tell me that there's fish in my peg, but I'm not catching anything on eight mils, and I'm missing a few bites. So I've just swapped to a six. So that's what I'm feeding anyway. So first chuck, yeah, I've just had a bream then, about two and a half pound. So at this stage now, this is when I get to have a play. So you straight in again with a six mil and, and hooking a fish. Oh, that's foul looked. Yeah, I get to have a play now just to see what, what I need to do to keep fish coming. Whether it's worth swapping to soft pellets and really clattering them skimmers. Or whether I can stick out with a six and which type of six as well. Um, and put a bit of everything in there to catch some carp and catch some skimmers. But well, this is really where, for me, this is the most important part of my match is getting things right when it's difficult. I mean, when it's easy and the carp are feeding, you can sit there with a big eight mil on and you can catch a carp because they're coming into your peg and they're clearing up. When they're not there, again, I'm going back to that. I'm spending a lot of time lifting my rig in and out or missing bites because the fish are a bit too small to be eating the eight mil. And I'm wasting a lot of time without putting fish in the net. So just by making a quick change to a smaller pellet or whatever else, I make myself a little bit more efficient again and I make sure I come back with a fish most casts. Of course, I'm going to miss the odd, odd bite and I'm going to foul up an odd fish still, mainly due to how much it's towing. It's really, really pulling through now. It's another thing worth, worth mentioning because of that tow. I'm a little bit worried about what's going on with my bait. It's a tiny, tiny fish. Definitely not what we want to catch. Because like I said, when I plumbed up before, this, this line that I'm on, the bottom slopes away from me. So if you think about it, everything that I'm feeding on my spot, if it's pulling to the left, if my bait's moving to the left, it's not going to move in a straight line. It's going to actually move further out into the lake as well as it drops down the slope. So because of that, I've cut back on my feed a little bit. Because the more I feed, the more my bait's going to spread out. And it's actually taking fish where I can't catch them. Or where I can't catch them with this rig. So I've cut back now. I'm just feeding with a cup now for a little while. Just to see if it's good enough to hold the fish in my swim. If I've attracted enough. And I'm trying to keep... Trying to keep feeding by hand to a minimum, just for a little period just to try and tighten my peg up a little bit. So again, feeding by hand's great when there's lots of fish feeding and they're clearing it all out and there's, there's a wide area of fish feeding. When there's not, I need that bait as tight as possible. I need to make the most of any fish that are, are moving into me swim. So hopefully now by concentrating on a cup, I can make the most of this little quiet period. Put a bit more in the net. So we're still doing all right. I've got 50 pound now. Definitely, we're an hour and a half in, just over an hour and a half in, I think. Have a little look, where are we? Where are we? No, we're flipping that. We're nearly two hours in. And yeah, we've got 50. Comfortable 50 in the net. Let's see how we go. I'm just starting to think about other things now. I'd say I've, I've got me long line as an option that I say I've fed nothing on it yet. <laughs> yeah, no bait's gone in on that yet because I don't actually know if I can fish out there with this wind. So the last thing I want to do is feed it, take fish away from myself, or to, to split my fish up and then not feed that line anyway. So I'm only going to feed that if I'm really desperate. Other than that, I've got my edge. So I've just started to, just now and again, just chuck a few pellets on my head, just not to, not to do anything really, just put a little bit of bait into the, into the peg. And it's not really how I'm expecting to fish with hard pellets down the edge. 
I'm expecting to fish ground bait and, and some corn over the top of that. But if I can get them coming in eating pellets, they're a lot easier to catch than they would be if I have big pot bait. So I'm going to chuck a few on that. For the next half hour, I'm going to chuck a few pellets on it, just see what happens. I don't really expect a, any fish to turn up there just yet. But if the pellets don't work down the edge, I'm quickly going to start potting it and feeding it properly with, with ground bait and such later on. And it's definitely on. See, I've been cupping for 10 minutes now, and it, it's really notable how much of a peg's changed. It's nowhere near as good as it was just with feeding with a cup. So it's picking up on things like that as quickly as possible. So when you're doing it wrong, it's obvious. It's pulling a bit with that wind as well, I don't know. Yeah, when, I'm, when it's not right, it's obvious. Your float don't go under. Because when I get it right, it's clear to see that there's a lot more fish in the peg when I am feeding by, by hand. But everything's just making it a bit hard to, to pin them down. It's another little tiny fish. It's not what I want to catch. Ooh. Give it one more chance with a six mil. I'm not happy catching two roach. I don't, I don't want to be doing that. This wind's getting up a bit. Might be a bit of a mistake not getting any rods out today, but I didn't think it was going to get this bad. few people are catching up. Sam's catching quite well next to me. Just dollying a method feeder onto a short line. Which is definitely a, a viable way of catching fish. You're keeping things very accurate. But it's very hard to maintain, <laughs> maintain an understanding of what's going on in your swim by, feed, by fishing in that way. Because you don't know when to feed. You, you can't respond to what's going on in your peg like you can when you've got a rig in the water. So although it seems the right option at the moment with this wind, I think a rig's going to come into its own later on. Once them carp start feeding again, it's going to be a lot better fishing with a, a proper rig and say fishing with a pole over the top of this line rather than a feeder. As long as we can hold it. It's going to win, it's going to win. No, he's not. Fuck oh, up, he was going to win them, Rich. He was, he was like one wiggle of his tail away from winning. Right, well at the moment, I don't even know what's going on. It's doing me head in, to be honest. There's lots of fish in me peg, definitely. I think there's a lot of small fish, a lot of skimmers and roach. And the old Carasio. What is being a proper pain in the arse is this toe. This wind's really got up now. It's flying through. Really going through me peg quickly. And because of that, I feel that it's both spread me feed out a lot, but also, my rig's nowhere near stationary for long enough in my peg. So I'm getting 30 seconds at the most when I can cling onto my rig as much as I can in my little, in my little zone where I fill most of my feed is and then it, it's going straight away. I can't keep it still, it's towing that strongly. In hindsight, I should have set a feeder up or a bomb to throw over it, even though it's only short. I should have definitely had something just to dolly over the top of this that I could have held onto and kept it in place where I wanted it to be. But I didn't set that up, so let's, let's not talk about that. But, what was definitely notable, I tried, I had a quick play on soft pellets. I caught a couple of fish, I caught a couple of skimmers on it. And it was definitely all right for that, but I just never felt I was gonna catch a carp on it. I didn't feel like it was right at all. Especially probably because of the toe more than anything, because of how much it's, it's whizzing through. So I've swapped to me. Uh, I've kept the heavier rig on that I had set up for me soft pellets, but I've swapped that to a banded hook, or hook with a band on and I'm fishing hard pellets, just with that a bit more stable rig now with a 4B18s instead of a 4B16s. Just to try and keep it in my zone for a little bit longer. So to try and keep that hook bait still. I don't know if it's working or not, I don't know. It just feels, 
Everything's gone a little bit scatty at the moment. So there's still fish there, there's still lots of little indications. I feel that if it was flat calm and I could fish a nice rig and keep everything tight, you'd be able to catch a lot of fish. There's definitely plenty of fish here. Without a shadow of a doubt. Well, I don't think there's many carp here at the moment. There's loads of, of big skimmers and all sorts of other things. So the only other thing that I have done, I've had one quick go down the edge where I'd, I'd fed a few pellets. Never had an indication on that. I didn't think there was anything down there just yet. So I've fed some ground bait there now. I've put one, one pot of ground bait because I'd still like to fish pellets if I can. I would like to fish pellets over the top of that line. But I've just put one ball of ground bait on there, a one loose-ish pot of ground bait, just to try and get some fish in me swim. Yeah, I don't want to go down the feeding ground bait every chuck route. I hate that with a passion. I feel that it spreads fish all over the place and it becomes very difficult to get a bite the more ground bait you feed. So I'm just trying to feed the one lot of first to get fish in me swimming and then wean them onto loose feed, whether that's pellets or corn or whatever. I just I don't want to go down the ground bait route down the edge if I can help it. But we'll see what happens other than that. I don't know what's going on, so I'm just putting very, very little in my net at the moment. Turn that off. Yeah, after such a brilliant first hour, I'm two and a half hours in and I've only got £60 after putting £45 in the net first hour. So it really has gone backwards, if I'm honest. But with the size of fish, if I can get my finger out and sort it out, we should be able to catch up quite quick. I mean, the, the fish are massive. We've seen the size of them that we caught that first hour. I only need another two hours, the same as that, and you've got 150, 160 pounds quite quickly. But at the moment, I don't know if it's going to happen. So I'm going to... I'm going to carry on doing this. What I'm... So I do still feel that it's making it even more difficult is that I can't catch unless I loose feed by hand as well. I have, I have to put it in with the pot still. But unless I loose feed by hand and make lots of noise, I, I just don't catch. Nothing comes into me swim. And in turn, by doing that all the time, it's spreading me bait too much and it's making them harder to catch. So it's a right flipping pain in the bum at the moment. But I'm just going to persevere. Hopefully, this wind's going to drop a little bit at the end. So if I can have a couple of good hours where I can present my rig nicely over the top of this bait, I think I should be all right. But we'll see. I'm going to give that edge another go in a minute. There's still not lots of fish getting caught. I've seen a few fish getting caught on short pole on the opposite side. It seems a little bit calmer over there. It's not quite as windy over there. Uh, and the lads to me right are both catching on the on the feeder to the island, but I haven't got that option, so I'm not worried about that. So we we'll just have to plod along and see what happens. If you go to pub, Rich, let's go pub. I can see a pub. Do you know what I mean? We can just go to pub. Isn't it?
Right, well, I've got hour of the match sort of left. And it's been proper weird, to be honest. I've, I've enjoyed myself. I feel like I've learnt a bit. I'm, I've understood that short line quite well throughout the day, and I, I feel like I know what I need to do on that now. It's still the only place I've fished. I've had a few dabbles down the edge, but I don't feel like it's happened. But already, I've, I've learned quite a few things about what could happen on the day. Like the edge where I've fed, it's definitely, definitely wrong. I've forgot that last time I came, or last year when we were here a little bit, I remember that it was really important to fish down in, in much deeper water down the edges and just feed it with pellets. I forgot all about that. So next time I know I can, by concentrating on sort of six foot a lot further out from the bank, I can keep my rig a lot still and there's a much, much better chance of me catching some fish here down the edge because my edge line today has been, it's been a waste of time. I've caught roach down there. This short one, I say I've got soft pellets out my head altogether. I don't think that's the way to go. Which it's, again, it's narrowed it down, made me, me fishing nice and simple. It's just a case of using the right size of pellets. So when there's not many carp feeding, catch a load of these skimmers on some sixes. When a few carp seem to be turning up, swap to me eight mils, catch some proper fish on eight mils. But that said, these skimmers that I'm catching on sixes, they ain't even skimmers, they're flipping. It's a bream, isn't it? Every one's two pound now. And so you can catch them lovely and quick. I can catch three of these in the time I'm catching one five pound carp. So it's a lot easier catching these skimmers. But that said, come here, you bugger. I think I'm catching skimmers because of the lack of carp here. I think if there were more carp in the area, we'd be catching a lot less silverfish or big bronze fish. Yeah, it's, it's quite notable. I've been watching that far bank and they're fishing in an identical way over there. Yet I've not seen them catch a skimmer. So I think there's a lot more carp over there. Whereas they're sitting, they're not catching quite as many fish. They're sitting waiting for a bite. And they're catching a proper fish as a result. Whereas over here, we're not really getting that. Well, I'm not getting that anyway on this MPEG. But it's definitely helped help make me preparation and me plan for the final simpler already. Just being here for one, one quick match. It's brilliant how much you, you learn and how much easier it makes you, or how much more simple your thought process can be into what you need to do. So we've still got a bit left to do. I'm still going to fish up here three more times, I think, before the final, two or three more times. So I want to do a bit of rod fishing. I need to sit and fish a rod in this open water. See if it's worth fishing wagglers and bombs, that sort of thing. But the island seems very, very straightforward. Anyone that's through a method to the island has caught fish. So I, I don't think there's much to that. I think if you draw one, you throw your feet, if it keeps going around, great. I mean, it, it's the most simple match you can have as long as you catch them fast enough and they're big enough. So I'm not really fussed on, you know, on practicing that. That's quite straightforward. And the, the last thing I'd like to have a go at is, is a long line. Just catching on, on deck in that deep water just in case it, it fishes bad for whatever reason. We might get a, a big hot still day and everything wants to hang away from the bank and they want to feed very carefully. I think in that case, it could be a nice delicate 100 pound long pole match. So I need to have that base covered as well. I'd like to spend a little bit of time fishing 13 or 14 meters up and down and seeing what sort of weight you can do doing that. But I so said, we've still got an hour left. How are we doing in the match? I honestly haven't got a clue. I feel like I've put a few fish in my net in the last couple of hours. I've probably put 50 pound in the net. We should have around 100 pound now. But there's, I think there's, I'm sure I saw someone putting a fourth net in on the far bank. So they'll have 200 pound. But so with the fish I've caught, that was never, that was never a possibility, I don't think, over here. But other than that, it's gone quite good. It's weird, it's really noticeable now. You get distinct spells of fish coming into your peg, like a great big shoal of fish comes into your peg. Because I'll get very few indications for five minutes. And then all of a sudden, the float won't stop moving. I'll get loads of indications on the way down, miss a few bites, and then you get a little run of fish, catch a few fish. So if they come in in a decent shoal, clear it out, and move on to the next. Like that's the, the skimmers, that is. The carp just seem to come in 
very randomly all day. I've just caught odd carp among the, the other fish. The big scale. Oh, that, that was me. Asian carp, dude. That's a big boy, that, isn't it? Right, so the match is finished now, or my little session's finished. I just want to run through quickly the two rigs that I've ended up using, or the, yeah, pretty much the two rigs that I've used. So I set up, as I said, a 4B18 slot and a 4B16 slot, just to see which was more stable. The plan was to fish soft pellets on a 4B18 slot, which in this case is a nice big round body, dead stable float that can keep things still. Yeah, it didn't quite work out that way that I fished soft pellets, but that proved to be a much better rig for keeping my bait nice and still with this toe that was pulling through really hard. So shotting wise, mega, mega simple. Literally a 4B18s, I've just got strung out number eight in the bottom third of the rig. So all my float, all my shot are right down the bottom end of the rig and it's gonna help to keep it nice and tight. I didn't want a solid bulk because I'm fishing on a slope. So if I'd fished on a slope, I wouldn't have been able to lay my rig right down the slope and keep it still. That's why I've got a nice strung out pattern that allows me to do that. But still, it's as simple as they come pretty much. Just all nice big shots keep my rig still and show me bites up nice and quick. The 4B16 rig is pretty much exactly the same. Let me get rid of that one. To begin with, it was shot exactly the same, just with number nines down the bottom. That was just to see if it was nice with a bit of a, a lighter rig. But what I did actually do at one point was spread all my shots all the way through this rig, just because I felt there were a few fish through the water. So I had a quick swap, I had a few casts with that. It weren't right, which gets that out of my head, the, the, the need to have a, an airy fairy girly rig. And it's definitely best just to have nice positive rigs, keep your bait on the bottom, get the job done. At the end of the day, I feel that a lake like this, it's a big R lake with a lot of big fish in. So there's no place for the airy fairy rigs that are used on canals, nice little delicate rigs where the fish are looking at everything. Here, it's definitely a case of the fish come in your peg and they feed. So you need nice positive rigs, get the job done, keep your bait still and catch the fish a lot quicker. So other than that, just the components of my rig really quickly. I've had a nice strong 020 mainline, so I'm catching big fish, want to get them in quick. And for today, I've used no 50 nook length to an 80 nook with a band on. So nothing, nothing fancy, I mean, nice and simple. 015 allows me to get a few bites, but I can still land pretty much everything. And as long as that's combined with a nice softer lackey, which in this case, I've used our green stuff, which I think it's eight to 10 or eight to 12, so the green stuff. Because with a bit of poke, I can still land everything. Keeps my rig nice and balanced and allows me to not get broken up too many times. But other than that, so for myself, it's been quite a nice, simple session. I've got all the things out my head that I need to get out my head. It's it simplified my approach in that short line, which is really, it was the aim of the game. That's what I was here for today. So hopefully a few more things to learn and we'll see how we get on in the final. I'm not, I've not got, I won't beat you, right? I'll have one for 80 if I've got that. Go on, look. You got him. 